In this screencast, I'm going to demonstrate how we use relative layouts to create interfaces, how we set up a run configuration, how we create listeners, and how we generate resource files. We we'll start by creating a new project. I'm going to close the existing windows and I'm going to go into my layout. Res, layout, activity main. And I'm going to design an interface using the relative layouts. So I'll get rid of the existing text view. I'm going to add a large text view and I'm going to align it to the top left hand corner. Align parent top left and I'll put some margins top and left. So we'll go left, we'll have 10 dp and top will have 10 dp. And I'm going to set the text to a number just so we can see what's going on. Like so. I'm now going to add a progress bar, a horizontal progress bar. I'm going to start by aligning it. To parent. So align, let's get rid of this a minute, align parent top and right as you can see. I'm now going to align it to the text view. So layout align component, I'm going to align right, left to the right, to the text view. So it's now pushed itself to the edge of the text view. And I need some margins now. So I need a left margin of about 30 dp and a top margin, a bit more than 5, about 15 dp, just to push it down to the right level, like so. I'm now going to add another text view to the bottom using the same procedure. Set this one to a number and this one is also aligned so let's check the margins I've got 10 dp on the top so I'm going to have 10 dp on the bottom I'm going to add a seek bar now to the bottom corner and I'm going to do the align component left right to the bottom text view like so and I'm going to have a left margin about the same as my progress bar, which is 30 dp. So I go here, I have a left margin of 30 dp. And you can see now my layout is complete. So I'm now going to change the properties. On the progress bar, I'm going to set the max property to 100 and the progress property to zero, like so. And my, I'm now going to modify my seek bar and apply the same properties, 100 and progress of zero, like so. And I'm now ready to build my code. So I go to Java, mainactivity.java, and I can start building my code. I'm going to build an embedded event handler. So I can lose my menu, like so. So I'm going to my seek bar, because that's what I want the action to be on. r.id.seek bar. And I'm now, oh, I've got some more red bit here, right? Can't resolve symbol. Add that to the imports. 
And now I'm going to add the on seek bar change listener. Seek bar dot set on on seek bar change listener. There we are. And I'm going to have a new seek bar dot on seek bar change listener. And you can see it's added the correct methods for me. I don't want this method, so I can't delete it. So I'm simply going to collapse it. And the same with that one. But I want this on progress changed. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to add some code to test this. So I'm going to put a log message to test this out. String dot value of seek bar dot get progress. Rather than firing up a new simulator every single time, I'm going to go to run and go to edit configurations. And I'm going to choose target device emulator Nexus one. So now when I, oh, log, can't resolve symbol, import log. So what I'm going to do now is add a filter and I'm using the key tag log. Log is the tag. And as we start moving this slider, you should see in the log file, we can now track in the progress of the seek bar. So let's go back to our code. Now we know that's working. What I'm going to do now is display that value in the text view. So I need to create a link to the text view So I've created a link to my text view. I need to import text view. And now text view dot set text string dot value of and it's going to be my seek bar dot get progress. So now if I test this, it should display in the text view. And as you can see, the text view is now changing. The next part is to change the progress bar so it mirrors what's displayed in the seek bar. So we need to do something very similar. And we can use the setter for progress. And we can copy the value in from the seek bar. And if we test this, this should do what we ask. And as we slide the seek bar along, the progress bar is keeping pace. For the final step, what I'm going to do is change it so the color of the text view changes based on the progress of the progress bar. To do this, I need to create a resource file. So I'll open my project. Find the values folder. 
I need to create a color.xml file. New file color.xml. I'm going to copy the structure from the strings.xml file to get me started. And now we can add our two colors. Color name equals red and that's going to be red green blue and another color we'll have a black color and that's going to be zero 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 so I've now created my two colors so back to main activity Java. I need an if statement now to detect the current progress. If I do the if statement, let's go to the resources file. So I get a resources object and obviously import it. And now in my if statement, I'll say if progress bar dot get dot get progress is greater than 80 we're going to say text view dot set text color and we're going to pull off the resource res dot get color r dot color dot red which we created else which said color to res dot get color r dot color dot black and we'll do the final test now to see if that works so as I move the scrub bar along It gets towards the end, what we should see. There we are, it changes to red. And if we come back again, the else kicks in and it goes back to black. So with this video and the other resources I've supplied for you, you should be able to do the lab session for the third topic.